What's going on, YouTube? This is E. And wait a minute. I'm all, all off. Hold on. <laughs> oh, gosh. What's going on, guys? Um, this is E. <laughs> I'm so off. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let me get it right. Let me get it right. Let me get it right. It takes me a minute just to make sense of this. That's what happens when you go live, right? <laughs> Anyway, guys, what's going on? This is E. I'm E, and this is Simply Put Sense. What's going on, guys? How you doing? Yo, what's going on, Rich? What's going on, Jizzle? How y'all doing? Thank you so much for joining in on this, this, um, this third live stream. See, I told you guys I wouldn't play. I was going to be consistent. Uh, <laughs> every Wednesday, I'm going to do this. Uh, and possibly I'm going to start adding um, a, probably a, a Sunday every here and there. What's going on, Dimitri? What's going on, guys? How you doing, Jerry L? Thank you so much for joining, guys. Thank you so much. So I'm here live at Bergdorf Goodman. Um, as you all probably didn't know, or some of you know, and some of you probably don't, um, I am now um, a perfume concierge with the Maker Fragrance brand uh, at Bergdorf Goodman. Uh, I am the business manager for that line, but I'm also a perfume concierge for the Bergdorf Goodman perfume floor, where I definitely will help people find their fragrance, you know? Because, um, you know, looking for, most people find perfume shopping extremely tedious and a lot of work. And I wanna take that stress away from you. So you'll have just an amazing experience um, finding some of the most amazing perfumes in the fragrance world. And Bergdorf Goodman is literally like a playground for fragrance. So guys, I wanted to talk to you about some fragrances that I'd like to describe as hidden gems. And you know, my channel is always about offering you guys fragrance options that very few people talk about, know about, and pay attention to. And I kind of like that. I prefer my fragrance to be one of those scents that people go, whoa, what, what is that? Not like Santal 33, Baccarat Rouge. What's going on, Brian? How you doing? Thank you so much. What's up? Don't worry about <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm kind of happy too. I have to say I'm, I love where I'm at and I love what I do. Um, it's, it, I landed really, really well from Atelier Cologne, guys. Uh, yeah, that's where I was previously, um, Atelier Cologne. And Atelier Cologne, I have to tell you, it, it was so intense. Like working with that company was so intense that I had absolutely no time to record or anything. When I got home, I just wanted to sleep, not edit no video for another three, four, five hours before I fall asleep. So yeah, <laughs> it was a lot. But anyway, I wanted to share with you all some amazing very, very beautiful hidden gems that you can find at Bergdorf Goodman. And I would like to encourage you all to come by Bergdorf Goodman if you're in New York, or if you're ever visiting, or if you're from New York, and say what's up. I'd love to introduce myself to some of you. I'd love to meet most of you, if not all of you. <laughs> I'm glad to see you doing live streams. I am too. Thank you so much, um, Jerry L. Uh, I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I am definitely doing live streams. And I'm bringing to you guys again some of the most beautiful perfumes in the fragrance world, but in a different format. Um, I will try to be doing more recorded videos at some point, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You know, because I really kind of miss editing. I really do kind of miss doing what I do, but it's just that I don't have the time. If only there were more hours in the day, guys. Ugh. But anyway, I'm sure you all know how that is. Um, so anyway. So guys, I have some really beautiful hidden gems for you to know about. Um, I would come through, but I'm in the Midwest. I get you, Jizzle. But hey, if you're ever in New York, I mean, you know, I'm sure you'll visit New York. You know, a lot of people come to New York every now and then um, to just get away from where they are and vacation. And, you know, New York is a really great place to visit and have a good time, I have to say. So if you're ever in New York or if you're in New York, Please come by and say what's up. I'm always in a women's store in the beauty department, and it would be an honor, an honor to meet all of you, to be honest. <laughs> so, yeah, um, just a big heart for Carlos. Two years he left today. Yes, big Italy Cologne fan, but wanted to know more about your brand, Sir Concierge. Thank you so much, for, uh, Brian. What's up? Glad to see you're putting content out again. Thank you so much, Brokers. 
Booker's Rebirth. <laughs> Thank you so much. I am very, very proud to be back too. And yes, it is the second year anniversary of my man Carlos's passing. Um, what's good, E? What you got for us today? I've been to New York twice, but I'll definitely keep you keep BG on the menu. Thank you. Definitely do that. Um, yeah, it's the second year anniversary of my man Carlos's passing. Um, it's fascinating because today I started working on that last video that me and him did uh, a couple of weeks before um, before he passed, and uh, and yeah, um, it's it's kind of annoying to my spirit to kind of. It's not annoying. It's just sad that that um, that he's no longer with us. You know, uh, really, really great guy. Definitely a very sensitive guy. Um, a guy who was teased and picked on by crazy people, um, but a guy that was really, really dedicated. Uh, very inspirational. Like Carlos was, you know, in his mid to late fifties, and the man did an amazing job. Um, outworking me and I'm I'm younger than him and he went hard you know so yeah definitely someone that I um will always always respect and look up to um you know and somebody that I have amazing fond memories of and I can't wait for you guys to see the last video we did I'm not going to edit it at all I'm just going to post it so you all can see the behind the scenes vibe and the camaraderie that we had I mean he was like Uncle Theo you know I, I mean Uncle Theo <laughs> That's like Theo, Theo, uncle, uncle. But yeah, um, Carlos, yeah, Carlos was like an uncle figure to me, you know. Um, definitely somebody who would crack up, have everybody laughing in videos because he was literally like, you know, like he didn't give a crap. He didn't give a shit, guys. Like Carlos was, um, he didn't care, you know. He was just a very, very open guy, sometimes a little too open. Sometimes he shared a little too much about himself and gave away too much, you know. Um, <laughs> but that was who he was, you know. He was just, you know, what you saw is what you got, you know. He was not a fake person whatsoever. And um, the Carlos you see in the videos is a Carlos everyone who loved him and knew him knew, you know. Um, yeah, Carlos's thing was amazing. Yeah, that was dope, you know. Brooklyn fragrance lover. That, that you know, it's funny because um that song he performed live one day um with this with the woman who sang it and there's a video of that of him playing piano while she's singing brooklyn fragrance lover um <laughs> and i have to tell you guys like it's really sad you know uh really sad it took me a while to even <laughs> look at a carlos video after he passed you know because it would just make me so so depressed um but anyway I know that he would be very, 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 very proud um, of my transition, where I've ended up. I'm sure he would be so happy for me. And um, I think he's going to be, you know, I think he'll, he'll be smelling what we're smelling. <laughs> he'll know about these fragrances. Um, I think he would love to know about them, I should say. And if he was around, I think he would be absolutely appreciating each and every one of the fragrances that I came here to share with you all today. Um, again, this whole video is going to be about hidden gems. Thank you so much, Supreme Ultimate. He'd be proud of you, E. Yeah, I, I think he would be. I think he would be coming here to Bergdorf, you know, having me take him out and treat him to lunch. You know, and they have a really amazing cafe and restaurant in the store. And I'm sure he'd be like, come on, let me get, let me get some lunch. <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, man, um, today's the second year anniversary of his passing. And, um. It's fascinating that I'm here um, scheduled to do a live stream. You know, there are no coincidences, guys. Absolutely no coincidences. And, um, yeah, it's, it's just wild. It's just wild. Anyway, life is crazy. I know, right? Two years went by like that, Mike. Um, I have to tell you guys, hug your loved ones. Tell people you care about them before you can't. Okay? It's... um. It's something that when you lose someone that's really important to you, you're reminded of how important it is to appreciate the loved ones that we have, you know, and to, you know, give them the energy they deserve and give them the time and the words, I love you, you know, they need to hear that. And it's good for your heart and for your mind to say that often, you know, because life, again, is very, very short and you never know. And um, 
if anything happens to people that you care about, you want to be able to remember the fact that you let them know as much as possible how much they mean to you, you know, um, or how much you appreciate them, you know. So uh, don't forget on days where you're missing people to appreciate those that are still with you, that still have your back, you know. That's very important. Always a lesson in life, you know, um, to learn and to pay attention to. So, guys, okay, so... Um, with that, I'd love to share with you a few fragrances that I am excited to get to you and to share with you. They are fragrances that I always end up spraying in Bergdorf Goodman. And I wanted to share with you both, to, with you guys, because as I said, my channel is always about showing and sharing with you options that most people don't talk about, most people don't know about. People on YouTube are not going to search these brands or these fragrances in the search bar. So... This video might not get a lot of attention, but that's great for you guys because that means these hidden gems will stay hidden. <laughs> so yeah, um, and if you ever, if you'd like a sample, if you'd like to try some of these out, uh, I'll just let you know, guys. You can email me at e l a excuse me e l hyphen a t o n at themaker .com. and that's again e l hyphen a t o n at themaker .com. That's my email. And you'll be able to like hit me up, and if you want to share your address with me, I might have no issue. I might. I have no issue uh, sharing with you options or samples of these options that I'm about to share with you. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. So I'm going to start with my brand because I think my brand is amazing, and I love, 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 love the perfumes. So let's just get into it. The first fragrance I wanted to share with you is a scent called Stag. Now, Stag is amazing. Stag is a fragrance from a company called The Maker, the brand that I work with and I manage in Bergdorf. And um, this fragrance is an award-winning perfume from the Fragrance Foundation. It won Best Niche Fragrance in 2022 by an independent brand. And I have to say, when you smell this fragrance, you understand why it's an award-winning scent. Here, let me show a close-up of it. So this fragrance is called Stag. It's from a brand called The Maker. The Maker was launched by the husband and wife team, Levin Alina, who founded Fresh. They sold Fresh, Fresh to LVMH. They went and opened this amazing hotel in Hudson, New York called the Maker Hotel. It's getting tons of publicity, tons and tons of publicity. And um, a lot of people are visiting. Um, a lot of people during the pandemic said, you know what, let's get out of New York City and let's go upstate. And that's where a lot of folks went. And man, Tons of celebrities have stayed at this hotel. And when you see it, you'll understand why it's such a beautiful place to go back to. Thank you so much, Maurice. Good to see you. Good to be back. Good to see you too, Maurice. Thank you so much for coming on and checking out this live. Um, but yeah, I wanted to share this fragrance with you because, guys, if you are into unique woody scents, this is a beautifully, beautifully done unique woody fragrance. It features Palo Santo, Oud, Black Leather, uh, patchouli. Um, this fragrance is just next level. Matter of fact, I'll just give you a whole note breakdown. Um, grapefruit, elemi, bergamot, black leather, labdanum, frankincense, patchouli, and palo santo. Woody, smoky, masculine, leaning. Women, when they wear this, smell beautiful in this. Uh, this fragrance is a boss in a bottle. Uh, imagine just sitting around. Um, just imagine... Just imagine a fragrance that has a, an amazing woody, smoky component with an amazing oud note. And the oud, I have to tell you guys, it's not going to be funky. It's not a skanky oud. You're not going to feel like you have a sheep on your back all day with this on your skin. You won't have to wait an hour to leave the house with this on your skin. <laughs> this fragrance is beautiful. And again, Stag, absolutely amazing. Um, I would say it lasts anywhere from six to eight hours. It depends on your skin, skin chemistry. Some people get like on the six hour level. Some people get towards the eight and nine hour level. Uh, I'm basically in the middle. I get about six to seven hours with this fragrance on my skin. It's not a screamer, but man, when people smell this on you, they will want to know what you're wearing because it's, it's nothing that you smell consistently. It's not like a scent you smell all the time. So yeah, an award-winning fragrance that you definitely want to consider um, a scent that most men don't know exists. Stag from the Maker. It's a banger, an award-winning banger. Oh, I love this fragrance. 175 for the 50 mil. And another thing that I love, you can unscrew the atomizer to refill empty atomizers for travel. I don't know why most brands don't do that. Actually, I do. I think they don't want you to 
share your perfumes with others. They want to make a, they want to make money off of every experience that people have with their scents. Um, but I think it's cool if you own a bottle and you want to share it and offer it to other people. You're literally promoting the brand, so I don't think that's a problem. So I, I'm glad that this brand, because we come from a place of hospitality, this brand is open to allowing you to open the atomizer so you can decant for travel. Really smart. Really awesome. Stag by the maker. Um, another fragrance by the maker that I think people would definitely want to know about is called Fire. Fire is boozy, boozy rum, Tahitian vanilla, um, frankincense, juniper berry, cyst, saffron, tobacco, uh, Australian sandalwood, and an amazing Tonka note. So the and but the Tahitian, Tahitian vanilla is the main main star in this fragrance. And I have to tell you that rum. It's insane. This is one of the booziest rum uh, vanilla fragrances I've smelled. Um, kind of in the same world of Chambre Noir. Um, I can't remember who makes Chambre Noir. Uh, shucks. <laughs> it's a company that does the whole photography thing. Um, <laughs> I love to see you active, brother. Thank you so much, Angel. I appreciate that. Um, do you guys remember um, the brand that does the whole photography um, theme perfumes and they have a fragrance called Chambre Noir? Darn it. I forgot. Drag Doc used to talk about them all the time. Oops. Olfactive Studio. Is it that? Okay. Yes, it is. Olfactive. There you go. Olfactive Studio. Thank you so much. I, I forgot. <laughs> But yeah, Chambre Noir is this. This is in the same world as Chambre Noir. I would say this is a little bit sweeter, um, very, very boozy. Definitely in that creation e Chambre Noir vibe. Uh, beautiful, creamy, huggable. Definitely a cozy, cozy fragrance. Fire is kind of like a mood. Imagine sitting in front of a fireplace, cuddling up with your partner on a leather dimpled couch like a Chesterfield, while you're sipping on a cocktail like a Scotch or like a rum. That's literally what this fragrance is. It's a mood. Almost dropped this bottle. <laughs> Almost dropped every bottle, guys. Anyway, it's definitely a mood. I should literally put this down. Um, <laughs> what's going on, brother? How you doing, my man? What's up with you too, man? Uh, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, but yeah, Fire Stag from the Maker. Two very beautiful fragrances that you will definitely want to know about. They lean more on the masculine side, but women smell beautiful in them. And I think, guys, if you're considering a fragrance for Valentine's Day, this is something you might want to consider for yourself. Um, so, yeah, Stag and Fire from The Maker. I had to start with my brand, you know. But I do have four other fragrances that I did want to share with you that are absolute bangers as well. And I'm just going to start off with a fragrance from a brand that most people don't even know exists. And it's a brand called Lila Noor. And I have two fragrances from Lila Noor for you to see. Okay, so there we are. Lila Noor is the name of this brand. They are a brand from India. The first Indian niche house in the fragrance world, to our knowledge. And um, this fragrance brand is exclusive to Bergdorf Goodman. And I have to tell you, these fragrances are uber uber niche okay if you're people who are not a fan if you're let's say starting your journey you're getting into perfume for the first time these might not be for you these are for people who really love to stand out and smell interesting these are not for people who want to smell nice you're not going to smell nice in these you're going to smell beautiful in these you're going to smell memorable in these you're going to smell amazing <laughs> and I'll just break it down. So the first one I want you to try or consider is called Devana Cedar. Um, Devana Cedra or Cedra. Um, Devana Cedra has cedar wood, clearly. Devana, which is a flower, in case you're curious. Uh, pink pepper, angelica, black currant, and musk. This fragrance is thick. When I smell this scent, guys, it's really, really beautiful interesting um there's nothing i've smelled that reminds me of it devon is one of those ingredients that it's a flower that doesn't smell pretty it's a flower that doesn't smell floral even it kind of smells leathery and thick and deep and sultry sexy beautiful um nothing happy in this scent <laughs> this is not a happy perfume but man is it lovely when i smell this guys 
it makes me want to know why a person smells amazing. When I smell this, it's definitely something I know you can't get anywhere. <laughs> uh, so Lila Noor is all about, are these ATARs or EDPs? So these are Eau de Parfum concentration. Everything is made in France and Grasse, but the brand is from uh, Madurai, which is, I guess, a province in India. Um, and yeah, Lila Noor is a brand you must consider if you're into fragrances that are different, special, unique, um, amazing. Uh, you have to do a cut the video one more time. I would love to do that. Yo, man, e, it's been a long time, man. I know it has been. And I'm so grateful for you to be back here, even though it's been a long time. Thank you so much, guys, for not unsubscribing to my channel. <laughs> That really means a lot to me because I know I haven't been around in a minute. So I really appreciate you all for sticking around and um, and being loyal. That really, really means a lot to me. Um, but yeah, Devana Cedar, if you're into a scent that's very, very, very unique, very beautiful, uh, I would definitely consider this scent. It is wow. And it lasts also. Uh, Devana Cedar will stay on your skin for a minute. It's very green. It's absolutely very green. And of course, when you have Devana, Cedarwood, Angelica, Angelica makes everything smell green. But if you're into Cedarwood, if you're into woody fragrances, if you're into green perfumes, good to have you back, E. Thank you so much, James. Good to be back, guy. Um, if you're into fragrances that are spicy, not sweet, thick, deep, dark, like when I smell this fragrance, the color black comes to mind. <laughs> along with green but it's just such a dark unique perfume it's it's an experience oh i absolutely love this fragrance divana Cedra by lila noor absolutely a scent you must consider you must try i can easily send you samples of it if you're interested um yeah hit me up on my email and i already shared that with you el hyphen a-t-o-n at the maker. Hey E, it's been a long time. How is it going? I hope everything is good on your end. Thank you so much. Everything is absolutely great on my end. I cannot complain. I'm living my best life in the fragrance capital of New York City in Bergdorf Goodman, smelling some of the most amazing fragrances and getting to smell them every single day. I will never unsubscribe. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you, Angel, for saying that, even though you retracted that message. <laughs> Thank you so much for saying that. I really appreciate you for not unsubscribing. That really means everything, my man. Um, so yeah, the next fragrance I wanted to share with you from Lila Noor is a fragrance called Agar Espice. Now guys, oud. Oud. But this isn't like oud that you're... This isn't the oud that you would expect. A, a lot like Stag, this is totally different from an oud experience that you normally are used to. So Stag is kind of like a touch of oud to give it a little bit of character and give it a little bit more of a, a woodiness, right? To kind of like add depth to the fragrance. Agar Espice is so different. So the oud in this fragrance is front and center, but it's done in a way that's extremely palatable, you know? You're not gonna smell oud and feel like you stepped in anything. Like this is not that type of oud. Um, but still very, very traditional in terms of like I can tell this isn't, a, a, this isn't a fragrance that's trying to appeal to everyone. This isn't a oud fragrance that's trying to be like oud for greatness, for instance. It's not trying to be like the oud that everyone will love, no. This is a dark, creamy, spicy take on oud that's done with a very, very beautiful hand. Um, so this fragrance features Assam oud, ginger, cypriol, um, Gayak wood, sandalwood, and leather. And the sandalwood in this fragrance, I thought was vanilla because it adds a creamy, slightly sweet experience in the fragrance that just makes this wood fragrance so warm, so huggable, as like I mentioned to you with the fire style. But this one, you don't get the, the, the rum or the boozy quality. This is just a very, very spicy, cardamom-ish smelling scent. Um, it kind of reminds me, there, there's no cardamom in here, and if there, there might be, who knows? It might be, but they don't, they don't mention it. But there is something about this fragrance 
that I just find so, so attractive. Uh, when I smell a Garden Spice, it is a oud, and I'll just wear it because, man, I love this fragrance. And yes, I'm an oversprayer. I should not be doing this with this fragrance because it's very long lasting. But ah, I just love the way this fragrance smells. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, this is beautiful. Um, your French pronunciation is great for a New Yorker. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dimitri. Um, sorry I misspelled it. I'll never unsubscribe to you. Thank you so much, my man. I really appreciate that. Um, this got in my mouth. I sprayed it so much. <laughs> wow. Anyway. Doesn't taste as good as it smells. I gotta tell you that. Um, <laughs> glad to see you back. Uh, thank you so much, fragrance friends and familia. Um, you went ham on those sprays. I know, I know. Supply and demand. I have to tell you, I'm an oversprayer. I don't play. I have too many fragrances to spray light. Um, you're gonna notice me when I walk into a room with my fragrances. Now, obviously, there's some moments where I'm light, especially when it's hot outside. When it's hot, I go easy. But how's it taste? It tastes like doesn't taste doesn't taste good respect on the sprays absolutely you gotta go in you gotta go in um i'm all about confidence you know I'm, i confidently wear my fragrances so yeah i wear them loud i wear them loudly unless it's hot you know when it's hot i give your nose a break you know i don't go too hard um unless the sun goes down when the sun goes down then you're getting hit you know you're getting hit with my fragrance no game because i i spray hard Roughly, how many fragrances do you own? I stopped counting after about 700 bottles. Uh, don't judge me. <laughs> don't judge me. Don't judge me. Um, but yeah, uh, honestly, I have to be honest with you. Uh, what makes this brand next level? Quality, performance, scent. Okay, so what makes Lila Noir special? They don't make fragrances that smell like anyone else's brand. They don't make fragrances that are trendy. They don't make fragrances that smell like other fragrances. Although they do have a vetiver that reminds me of a really niche take on Encore Noir by Lalique. Um, it's their vetiver. So if you ever look up Lila Noor and you type vetiver, it will come up. Um, I have to tell you guys, there's nothing like this brand in this store that I've ever smelled in general. There's nothing like these fragrances in my collection. Um, they're just deep. They're just serious. They're like, they're not, they're not, again, the reason why, okay, what makes Lila Noor special? They're not trying to be special to everyone. That's what makes them special. They're not trying to be lovable to everyone. That's what makes them special. They are catering to tastes that appreciate quality. And not everybody has the nose to appreciate quality. A lot of people think bad things smell high quality. A lot of people think a famous name obviously creates high quality. That's not the case. Um, and Lee Lenore is a great example of a brand most people don't even know exists that makes something most people should experience if they're fragrance enthusiasts. So consider this fragrance, um, Agar Espice. I'd stand by this scent 100%. It is next level, it is beautiful. If you like a spicy, creamy, almost vanilla oud that doesn't smell like vanilla, uh, you gotta try this. It's Next level, beautiful. Um, all right, so I have two more fragrances to show you guys and um, we're getting through them. Um, the next brand is another brand that no one knows or very few people knows exists unless you're like um, a fragrance nerd like me. Um, and this is a brand called Taffin. And Taffin, this fragrance is called La Rouge. La Rouge, La Rouge. I am not doing the kh right. La Rouge, <laughs> La Rouge uh, by Taffin. Uh, this beautiful bottle is really cool. I have to show you this. See that? That's pretty, pretty damn cool. Um, it's not, I don't know if it's, I don't know. It feels like a glass, but this really cool texture is really interesting. So Taffin is actually a brand that was uh, created from a jewelry company called Taffin. Taffin Jewelry is the maker of this line. And the founder of that brand is the grandson of Givenchy, which is really, really interesting. That family is extremely talented. So, you know, fashion, jewelry, fragrance, 
really fascinating, talented family. And um, so this line of fragrances came out in 2021. And uh, there are all kinds of, diff there's, they're basically named by the color of the bottle. So you have La Rouge, La Marron, um, La Rose, uh, La Verre. There, there are all kinds of different um, colors. And each bottle is the color it's named after. And they all smell like the color, but in a really interesting way. So La Rouge has ginger, cardamom, Oh, I love cardamom, sage, magnolia, orris root, and you really get the orris root. Now, it's really important that you distinguish orris root from iris. You don't get that clean, kind of like powdery iris. This is more of a deep, waxy orris, totally different. Um, you also get a little bit of, um, you also, I hate saying that, you also get a little bit of, because that's what everybody says, is like, you don't get this, you don't get that, that's what's in, okay, anyway. What's in this fragrance is also saffron, um, Haitian vetiver, and Australian sandalwood. And I have to tell you, I'm noticing a theme. There's a lot of sandalwoods in these fragrances. But this fragrance right here, I wear this all the time on my way home from Bergdorf, and I have to tell you, I get tons of people asking me, what am I wearing when I put this on my skin? From my coworkers that are in the elevator with me to getting on the trains, I have to tell you, I've noticed this fragrance gets tons of attention. Um, and the reason why is because it's extremely strong. Uh, this is another fragrance that you can layer uh, with other things. Actually, I could, I could layer this with, <laughs> I could layer this with uh, SPC. Um, Agar Espice because, and yeah, I can taste this one too. Uh, yeah, because um, uh, <laughs> they're in the same family. So I like to layer things in the same family, but these are really heavy hitters. So yeah, but I'm going to smell good regardless. Anyway, Taffin La Rouge. This fragrance is just an amazing experience. I just love, 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 love the way the Australian sandalwood and the orris and the cardamom works in this perfume. You just get this really spicy, deep, warm experience that people will hunt you down on the street to smell. Uh, I am not lying. <laughs> so La Rouge by Taffin, definitely a fragrance to consider. Definitely a scent that I think a lot of people would like to know about um, who don't. And yeah, I live. I, I absolutely love this fragrance and stand it. Let's go. What's good, guys? <laughs> Um, wow, welcome back. I missed your videos. Thank you so much, Joseph. I missed you coming and checking out my videos. Um, I really appreciate you, my man. Thank you so much. Um, but yeah, gotta, gotta try this, guys, if you haven't. If you ever see this bottle in any store, I don't know where else in the U.S. this fragrance, um, this fragrance brand is available. But if you see anything that looks like this, stop and smell it. You're gonna like a lot of them can't layer that at 450 beans. Okay, I, I can understand that. Um, but I will tell you, $450 for this fragrance, it is a lot. It's, it's expensive, I can't lie. This is like Roja Dove territory, for sure. But the cool thing, Bergdorf does these uh, gift card events where they will take a lot of money off your purchase. So for instance, if you spent 400, they'll take off 100. So instead of something that's 450, it's 350. I know that's not a huge, huge difference, but again, an option. Um, and again, you get what you pay for. You're not gonna be smelling. So uh, guys, designer fragrances, they're very inexpensive. You can get a couple of fragrances at Sephora for less than $200, right? But I have to tell you, you're gonna smell like people who bought perfume from Sephora. If you were to spend $450 on this, you're gonna not buy four designer fragrances that you see in a Sephora or an Ulta, but you're gonna be wearing something that no one is gonna smell like. It's exclusivity. So spending a lot of money on a perfume that's hard to find, that's exclusive compared to what everyone else knows and wears, I think it's not a horrible consideration. And personally, me, I'm one who budgets for fragrance. You know, I don't have a lot of vices, I'm a collector. Um, I like to spend as little as money, as, as little as possible, but I'm also someone who's, at the moment, I'm focusing more on supporting brands I love as opposed to going through third, third party and um, great markets. Like, I believe in supporting brands I care about. So, 
but yeah, I love this fragrance. I know it's a lot of money. I know it's expensive, but when you smell it, you'll understand why it is. It's absolutely beautiful. And I feel like this is the standout along with the La Rose and the Taffin collection. Both are exceptional experiences. Um, but yeah, I get you guys. They are, it's not, it's not cheap. But you wanna know something? Niche perfume is expensive for a reason. You know, I gotta tell you though, some niche fragrances I don't think are worth their price point. I'm not going to say any names at the moment, but, you know, there's some fragrance brands I look at and I'm like, mm, you guys are trying it, you know, y'all are playing yourselves, you know, <laughs> but I also appreciate when a brand does something that is interesting and they're bringing something new to the table. And I have to say, I don't smell things that smell like this. So if I'm going to spend $400 on a perfume, I could see this being an option I would consider because... You're just not going to smell like other people. And it's worth it to smell unique to me. Because um, fragrance memories are so, so ingrained. Like, fragrance and memory are so connected. So I don't mind spending money on fragrances that allow me to create my own scent memory, you know. Um, that is a sick bottle. There's some cool fragrances. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really love these fragrances. And I think you'll, if once you get your nose on them, I think you'll appreciate them too. So, guys. I have the last fragrance I wanted to share with you all. It's a fragrance from a brand called Veronique Goodbye. And everyone is talking about Veronique Goodbye. It's become um, a brand that more people are noticing because they're doing great with their marketing and they're getting the word out. Um, everyone is talking about Veronique or has talked about Veronique Goodbye over the last couple of years. But there is a new fragrance that they dropped in 2022 that is nowhere to be seen on YouTube and not even on Fragrantica. And that annoys me because this fragrance needs to be everywhere. It is amazing. It's called Oud Elixir by Veronique Goodbye. And um, I feel you, bro, as a collector, you want that exclusivity. Exactly. So just to piggyback off of what you just said, my man. Um, hey, Mitsu, have you ever tried Equivoque from Givenchy Private. Equivoque, no, I have not. Um, that name is amazing, I have to tell you, but no, I have not smelled them. I'm looking forward to smelling that. Um, I have not been smelling any of the Givenchy's before, um, but absolutely awesome. Uh, like Creed, they have a lot of synthetic in the formula and smell. That is a sick bottle. So many sprays. Have you ever smelled any Zara? No, I have not smelled any of the new Zahara fragrances. I'm really curious about that line also. Um, but no, I have not smelled them. And um, so, yeah, when you're a collector, you do want things that are more exclusive. Like, I look at my collection like this. I don't add anything to my co collection that doesn't add to my collection. It has to be something I don't own or something I really, really enjoy to collect, like a style of scent or a note that I really love. Like, I love fig. So if I find a special fig fragrance, it's getting in my collection. Um, but, yeah, I like, to, I, like, I, think of, I like to look at my collection as an art collection. Like, you, you, an art collector never buys just random art, you know? You want to buy things that enhances your collection, makes your collection better. And that's what I like to look at as a collector to do. I like to do that as a collector. I don't want to just buy random fragrances and just have a lot of fragrances. My focus is more on um, adding things that add to my collection and make my collection even more special. And um, a fragrance that, guys, I think you really need to consider is a fragrance called Veronique Goodbye. And this scent is called Oud Elixir. And I know that some of you, it's funny because this bottle doesn't actually have the name on it. It doesn't even have the name. All you see is Veronique Goodbye, right? But the fragrance is insane. Now, I have to tell you guys, if people are focused so much on Oud for Greatness, right here, right here. If you're a person who loves Oud for Greatness and you want a great Oud fragrance that most people don't know about, and should Veronique Goodbye's Oud Elixir is your scent. This is an amazing Oud fragrance. Uh, this is an Oud fragrance that doesn't smell like, well, when you smell it, you'll say, oh, it's familiar, you know? But it's done in such an impeccable way. Possible to repeat your email address? Absolutely. E-L hyphen A-T-O-N at themaker.com. That's E-L hyphen 
hyphen. <laughs> Don't forget that or it won't, won't, it won't work. Um, so E-L hyphen A-T-O-N at themaker.com. Equipment K is cardamom plus oud. Ooh, that sounds insane. Good Lord. I can't wait to try that. <laughs> I really can't wait to try that. I'm also looking forward to trying Baby Cat by uh, by YSL, the Vestiaire collection. Um, I really like YSL's Vestiaire fragrances, um, and I'm really, really looking forward to considering and trying Baby Cat. It's hard to find it in the U.S., though. I think it's like a Harrods exclusive, but um, it's becoming more accessible. It's, that's... That exclusivity is running out, but uh, hopefully we'll get an MBG. But guys, I'm trying to share with you an oud that nobody has yet, that no one is talking about yet, that no one is doing videos about yet. Um, have you have you hit up both, both versions of Gris Charnel? Yes, I have. That's the BDK bread, right? Um, yes, I have. Um, I like BDK. I like BDK. I'll just put it like that. Yes, I have. Nice. Not bad at all. Is Grisha no BDK in my bucket? <laughs> I could have sworn it was. But maybe I'm, but is it BDK? Somebody say yes, no? <laughs> oh well. Anyway. Um anyway, let me get back to this fragrance, guys. <laughs> guys, you have to smell Varani Goodbye's Oodle Elixir. If yeah, fig and sandalwood. Oh, nice. Oh, really? Okay. Say no more. I definitely will be smelling that soon. <laughs> definitely will be smelling that soon. Oh, I did smell that. Yes, I have smelled that. Um, I like BDK. I do. I, I think their fragrances are really, really nice. They're very, very, um, very approachable. Ah. Like a baby plum Japonais. Get out. Really? Uh, Art de Parfum. Kimono Vert. Huh. Thank you so much for putting me on. I love learning about things that... Um, I, learned, I love learning about things I haven't experienced yet or haven't heard about. So thank you for putting me on, guys. Um, but yeah, anyway, going back to this fragrance. Oud Elixir by Veronique. Goodbye. If you have not smelled Oud for Greatness, if you smelled Oud for Greatness, this, I think, should be the next Oud for Greatness. Um, I think this should be the next Oud fragrance that's taken the fragrance world by storm. It is seriously beautiful. When I smell this scent, guys, <laughs> uh, first of all, it lasts forever. Ah, there's some rose in this fragrance, clearly. That's, the fr that's one of the first things you're going to smell. In this fragrance, you're going to get um, a lot of beautiful ingredients that is very dark, very earthy, very leathery. Um, it's mate, rose, labdanum, saffron, myrrh, cypriol, oud, patchouli, gayak wood, amber, elemi resin, and vetiver. Every single ingredient in this fragrance is dark. There are no fruits, <laughs> nothing soft. The only floral is rose, and um, everything else is either a deep, deep, dark ingredient, an earthy, impactful ingredient, or oud. I have to tell you guys, there's nothing pretty about oud elixir by Brownie Goodbye. This fragrance is beautiful, stunning, a head turner, a fragrance that people are going to want to know what you're wearing when you put it on your skin. Um, I just, I just find this scent so beautiful. And yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of people love Oud for Greatness, and for good reason, that fragrance is amazing. Uh, but this fragrance, not as expensive. 100 ml, 320, I believe the bottle is costing. Um, Rose Great Edition, those notes sound serious. Exactly, like not one ingredient in this fragrance is pretty soft, easy to wear. They're all just intense. <laughs> Nothing in this fragrance is soft. Rose is probably the softest thing. And honestly, the rose in this fragrance give this fragrance a little breath because it's deep. It's deep. It's so deep. I love, 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 love this fragrance. <laughs> 
Guys, I mean, Veronique Dubai, I think um, a lot of you probably have noticed this brand getting a lot of attention and thought to yourself, oh, here we go. Another brand reaching out to all the influencers, trying to get attention, just trying to buy um, like positive momentum and positive reviews. No, no. Uh, this brand is definitely worth considering. There is a, um, there is a, a, relatability there is a authenticity to this brand that i think is absolutely beautiful ronnie goodbye she's an awesome woman um an amazing artist herself uh i love that way she talks about her fragrances like the way she talks about her fragrances kind of puts you in a nice trance you know it's like i'm like ah tell me more tell me more <laughs> She is awesome. Um, so yeah, Ronnie Goodbye, Oud Elixir, guys. Um, you're not gonna again see the bottle name. There's no name on this. It's just her name on it, um, and a black cap on there. What's the name of the brand? Is Veronique Goodbye. You see that? G A B A I. Veronique Goodbye. Lovely, lovely. Oud Elixir. It's. Like, honestly, this fragrance could be in a 400 500 range, in my opinion. Uh, for 320 it is a bargain when you consider its competitors and what it smells like. Smell this fragrance compared to its competitors. <sighs> and you'll understand. <laughs> you will understand. Wow. Um, absolutely, she put her foot in this one. Absolutely, she put her foot in this one. Veronica buys Oud Elixir. Black cap, lovely scent. Yizzo, Verani, goodbye, absolutely. Um, so now guys, I would love to know what's up with you. <laughs> so I share with you some of the fragrances that I love. Okay, so just to recap, Verani, goodbye, Oud Elixir. That's how you'll notice this bottle because it doesn't say anything on it. Uh, definitely need to know about this fragrance. The next fragrance is gonna be um, Taffin's La Rouge. Ah, uh, a beautiful leathery, ambery uh, concoction that is insane. Probably the most expensive fragrance that I showed you guys. But I have to tell you, this particular fragrance um, competes with fragrances in a similar price point. I'm just going to put it like that. Amouage, uh, Frederick Mall, um, uh, Roja. This fragrance line will fit right in, and this particular scent and La Rose, amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, the other fragrances, Lila Noor, Davana Sedra, or Davana Sed, Cedarwood, Davana Flower. Very crunchy. This fragrance is insane. When I mean crunchy, when you smell this fragrance, it's almost like you can step on it. <laughs> It's thick. It's it's thick. Uh, this fragrance is insane. So Lila Noor, a brand that most people don't know exists, but if you're in the niche world, if you're a niche fan and you don't know about this fragrance, you need to know about this fragrance. Um, because I think it's very, very unique. It's one of the most unique fragrances in the collection of Lila Noor, and in my opinion, one of the more unique fragrances in the Bertolt Goodman store. Definitely a unique scent. Um, and again, I want to share with you guys fragrances that are unique, so this way you can stand out in a beautiful way in an amazing way but it's about being unique but nice and awesome yes absolutely lena no parfum sorry but must ask what happened that you were gone so long all right joseph so the reason why i was gone so long my man is because and i think i mentioned this before but i don't mind sharing it again um so what happened to me man was that i got i, I started managing the atelier cologne boutique and that bowl really took a lot of my time and a lot of my energy, right? And I was managing that store for four years. So if you notice the timeline, four years ago, I started to get a lot more inconsistent with my videos. I tried to hold on as much as I could. I would do like one or two um, every three or four weeks, but it just got to a point where I just couldn't do them because the editing was just taxing me and um, and the older you get, the more you want to use your time for things you want to use them for. You want to you want to relax, you know, because you work hard, you want to relax hard. You want to play hard and 
you don't want to work after work. And I got to a point where editing my videos became work, it became a chore, it became tedious. So I had to like calm it down. Um, so yeah, that's what that was about. Um, but I absolutely miss you guys a lot, uh, definitely. And, um, but yeah, so I got really caught up with my videos and I mean, I got really caught up in my career and it made it really difficult for me to do this. Ah, uh, yes, Oud Safir, amazing fragrance. Smells a lot like um, Tuscan leather, a lot lighter, a little bit more, I would say a little bit more fruity, um, but absolutely beautiful. Yeah, you know, it's really, really hard, Jose, to really work and do, it's hard to work a full-time job where you are like really, really dependent on and asked to do a lot and do a YouTube channel that depends on tons of editing. Are there any new designers that piqued your interest at all recently? Designers. So, glad to see the OGs back in the fragrance. Back, wait a minute, back doing fragrance videos? Is that what you said, bro? <laughs> I'm glad you're back, one of the OGs who got me into frags. Oh, my God. When people call me an OG, it just makes me feel uber old. <laughs> but honestly, I'm not really the OG. Uh, that's like Steven, like Robes 08, A Gentleman's Journey. Um, it's difficult, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I am an OG at this point, right? Um, but yeah, uh, one of the greats. Thank you so much, Fritz. I really, really appreciate you for saying that. Um, you really didn't have to say that, but I really appreciate you for saying that. Thoughts on res oh, um, Restret Restretto Intense Cafe by Montal? I really dig it. Um, I love uh, Intense Cafe, but I think that one is even darker and a lot more interesting. Um, you were in the crew, missed you. Thank you so much, Joseph. Uh, but to answer that question before about designer frequencies that I'm fuck that I'm effing with <laughs> um, that I'm messing with, I would say uh, the I loved the Givenchy Gentleman um, Private Reserve fragrance. I just think that is really beautiful. Um, I really love the Ted. Excuse me, Ted Demers. Yes, the Ted Demers um, OG Frey. I really, really love. Um, H24 Eau de Parfum by Hermes. I mean, guys, I love Hermes. Hermes is just, I feel like they do just most things beautifully. Most things beautifully. And I also love Hermes because they never, never follow trends. Like, they're never trying to be what other brands are doing. Have you smelled Parfum de Mali's Haltain? And um, do you have more niche suggestions? Of course I have a lot of niche suggestions. And I'm going to be offering them to you every Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Um, so I shared with you about a good six fragrances today and, um, well, yeah, and I'm going to share with you another amazing uh, group of fragrances, um, next week as well. Uh, have you smelled Parfum de Marley's Haltain? Yes, I smelled Haltain. Haltain reminds me of a horse stable. <laughs> Haltain reminds me of the best smelling horse stable you could possibly be in. Uh, it smells like, um, like a perfumed horse. Yeah. That's what Haltain reminds me of. I have to tell you, though, it smells awesome. <laughs> it smells like a horse you sprayed perfume on and, you know, rode. Yeah, that's what I would say Haltain smells like. I like it. I would wear it. I would buy it. But it wouldn't be the first thing I would consider. Just started editing my own videos for IG, and I can appreciate how much effort and time goes into it. Yeah, man, it is insane to edit and um my videos would take me forever um a few of your suggestions from your old videos ended up in regular rotation Guerlain, Loboise, and Ted Demez, Autre Frech being two of them absolutely beautiful fragrances Autre Frech actually was replaced by OG Frey um and I feel like the OG Frey is it's not as great, but it's not bad either. I feel like the 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 pomelo in that fragrance is just so beautiful and juicy. I want to bite it, you know? Um, I really, really dig it. But I do have a special place in my heart for the Autre Fresh. It was one of my favorite summer scents from Hermes. Um, and I love clean, fresh fragrances. And Autre Fresh was one of those perfumes that I bought like the... I bought the, um, I didn't buy the sprayable version of that fragrance because I knew I'd be refilling a decant to take it with me. So I bought the refillable bottle, the refillable 125 bottle. And um, 
125 milliliter bottle and I killed it. Killed it, killed it, killed it. <laughs> um, yeah, I love the Ultra Fresh, but I have to tell you, the OG Vray, the um, G Vray, uh, the Tim that met G Vray is wow. It's it's absolutely wow. I feel like Christine Agel, the new creative director, she's really working hard to put her foot in that brand and like put her stamp on it, you know, because uh, she's, you know, she's having to fill very, very, very big shoes. Uh, Jean-Claude Elena is a beast. And I mean, following in his footsteps is really difficult to do. So, I mean, it's pretty awesome that she is um, doing products. I mean, she's doing good work, but I have to tell you, I kind of like his work a little better. But I feel like her, she's getting her grounding, she's getting her bearings and the fragrances that she's doing lately, more lately than ever have been a lot better to me than what she's been doing when she first started. Um, just start, okay. And uh, any thoughts on Banana Republic line of perfumes? Not really, um, um, not really something that I'm 100% into. They did a few fragrances in the past that I bought. Um, they have a fragrance that is a very clean, I ah, forgot the name. Yes, I bought um, the, uh, the Banana Republic line in the past and um, I talked about a couple of them on my video. Um, I find a lot of them very derivative copies of other fragrances from other brands. So not a big fan. You know, um, but if you want to smell nice, you don't want to spend a ton of money. They do have a couple of options that's worth considering, in my opinion. Um, but I think there's so many better fragrances to to prioritize. So pure white smells like like clean cotton. Um, it's hard to wear for me because it leans on the prettier side, but I find it beautiful as well. I like to smell it, but I don't know if I want to wear it, you know, Um but I did like pure white. I think pure white smells like clean linen, like really, really clean linen. I just wish it was a little less sweet and then I would be more into it. Uh, but I do like the style of the fragrance itself. I like clean scents. I like to smell clean. Most men don't smell clean. So, you know, when the men smell clean, we're already smelling better than most. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I do kind of, I like, I like pure white. I also like the vintage. They have a they have one that's like a, something vintage or something. It's a it's a green scent, but absolutely beautiful. You bought Outre Fraiche, Le Boise, Chalamar Cologne from your recomm recommendations. Now I'm rich. All are discontinued. <laughs> yes, they all are discontinued. That's so funny. Um, it's awesome to hear from you, my brother. Today's the day where we also remember Carlos. God bless. Yes, it is. It is absolutely the day that we um, celebrate one of the best fragrance reviewers in the fragrance world that passed a few, a couple of years ago. Vintage Green. Absolutely. That's it. Oh, hold on. Let, what did you say? Let's see. Oh, 2.0 are almost gone. Last time Siren went for 500 plus. Have you smelled Byredo Black Saffron? Yes, I have smelled Black Saffron. Do you have any recommend recommendations for anything like it? If you like Black Saffron, you'll love Tuscan Leather. You'll love Ombre Leather. You'll love Oud Saphir by Atelier Cologne. You'll love a lot of leather fragrances. You'll love Gold Dolphin. Gold Dolphin by uh, P. Parfum de Marly. Um, if you're a fan of that, you'll love all of those because literally that's what they all, that's what it smells like. It's actually literally a clone of Tuscan leather and ombre leather. Um, yeah. Been rocking Angel Shares. Nice. Angel Share is awesome. I find that fire smells in the same world as Angel Share. Although I have to be honest with you, I feel like fire is a niche version of Angel Share. If I were to... The, uh, to me, Fire and Angel Share kind of like our cousins. Not brothers, but cousins. And um, I kind of give this the edge over Angel Share because I like the booziness. I feel like the booziness in this fragrance is so sophisticated and it just smells really, really expensive. Um, but both fragrances are absolutely beautiful. And yes, I absolutely love Angel Share. And um, yeah, I own it, but when I got Fire, I gave it to a family member. Uh, <laughs> so Angel Share came and went out of my collection because I felt like I didn't need it after I bought fire, after I got fire. I, you know, I worked for the brand, so I was able to get, you know, a couple of bottles. So I was like, eh, I'm not going to wear Angel Chef to have this. Uh, like 
said you were part of the crew. You were there with, uh, yeah, Jeremy Fragrance, Brooklyn Fragrance over to Vincent. Yes. Yeah, yes. But, you know, there was a huge, huge, ama there was an amazing perfume. There were amazing reviewers before us, you know. And I consider those the OGs, you know what I mean? Uh, but, yeah, and Stephen being one of them. Uh, Stephen is definitely an OG. He doesn't look it, but he's been in this game for a minute. Um, helping the fragrance community not waste money. Um, so, you know, got to give, gotta give him and all of them props. Uh, but yeah, so um, I, those are like some of the designer fragrances that I've been into. I have to tell you, though, I've become a lot more of a niche head. Um, the majority of my collection has definitely tipped into the niche world more than the designer world. I have more niche fragrances than designer fragrances now. And um, I love designer scents. But I just feel like so many of them smell like so many other fragrances. It kind of, you know, becomes redundant. And it's like if you own one, I feel like if you buy a fragrance today and you own Invictus, it's redundant. Because every fragrance smells like Invictus. Like, especially like the clean, fresh fragrances for men. Everything smells like a shower gel. If you're going to be, if it's going to be a freshie for men, it has to be sweet or it won't get on the market. And that's weird to me. Um, so yeah, everything is following the Paco Rabanne and Victus model. It's either, you know, f sweet freshies. Everything is sweet. Everything is sweet. And I don't have a problem with that. I think sweet fragrances are amazing, but when everything is this, if, when everything smells the same, it's just like, wah, wah, you know, been there, done that. I'm kind of bored, you know, but yeah, um, again, Veronique goodbye. I'm getting out of here, guys. I'm going to tell you one last time. Veronique goodbye. Oud Elixir, consider this. Um, Fire by the Maker, consider this. Stag by the Maker, an award-winning Oud Palo Santo and Leather Scent. Gotta try this. Niche equals exclusivity. Simply put, sense equals niche. I gotta tell you, I'm more, I, my whole channel, my whole channel has always been about designer, but I am definitely leaning niche. And yes, I am, Alex, what's going on? Thank you so much for coming through. I really appreciate you, Alex. And um, if you want, you can rewind and check out the earlier portion of the video. I wanted to give you guys some hidden gems at Bergdorf that you probably don't know about. And um, I'm coming on next Wednesday to offer you some more options and to talk to you about some other things. Man, I missed your videos. Thank you so much, Alex. I missed offering my videos to you, my man. And I'm grateful that you did not uh, unsubscribe and you're still with me, you know? Thank you so much. You know, it's been a while. So the fact that you all are still here, it really means everything, guys. Um, what's your thoughts on to Initial Oud for Greatness? Initial Oud for Greatness is amazing. It's amazing. Honestly, though, it's like the Oud equivalent of Baccarat Rouge. It's the Oud equivalent of Baccarat Rouge. Oud for Greatness is amazing. Um, but it's so been there, done that. It's so popular that that's why I wanted you to smell or consider the Oud Elixir by Varnique Goodbye. Because this is an Oud that you're not going to run into when you smell it. Um, you're not going to smell this fragrance on other people. It's just different. It's just different. You'll smell it and you'll go, eh. That reminds me of this or that, but you know what? I got to tell you guys, there's very few fragrances that are doing that oud like this fragrance is. It's just, it's just, uh, <laughs> it's just, whoa. Um, I don't think oud for greatness can touch this. I, I'm, I'm, my opinion. Um, I don't think oud for greatness is as good as this. I really don't. Um, <laughs> that's a lot, but yes. How's the book coming? The book is finished. I just need it to be published, and I refuse to do it on my own. I should go on Jeremy Copeland. I love my dude. My, yo, Jeremy Copeland is so talented and so awesome. Um, his taste, his style of, of reviewing has really, really grown. Um, this man is next level. Uh, I, I appreciate his taste. I appreciate his suggestions. I think Jer Justin Copeland is, I said Jeremy Copeland. <laughs> Whoa, he's gonna kill me for that. Um, Justin is next level. Justin is absolutely next level. Um, dude is awesome. Uh, we used to collab, me, Jeremy, I can't stop saying that. Um, <laughs> 
You know what it is? Because I was talking about Jeremy on uh, Mr. Smelly's podcast. And I went on Mr. Smelly's podcast and I started talking about Jeremy. And it was just a fascinating conversation. So I think I have that on my brain because I'm like having a deja vu. But Justin Copeland, yes. Me, Justin, uh, Big Beard, and um, Kevin Samuels. Rest in peace, my man. Uh, we were like black reviewers coming together to share our opinions on stuff. And we did a couple of live streams that went really awesome. And I really miss doing those videos with those brothers. And um, I wish I could rewind and um, and do that and make it more of our more 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 of our thing. Because man, that was that was fun. It was awesome. Those guys were the best, you know. Um, anyway, guys, I want you to. Do me a really quick favor, if you can, before you get off this, before I get off this, could you do me a favor? And it's, I don't like oud for greatness, smells like vitamin C chewables from back in the day with the little metallic. <laughs> I get you, I get you, I get you, I get you. Well, I gotta tell you, um, oud elixir does not smell like that. Um, Stag from, which is another beautiful oudy experience, does not smell like that. Uh, you're not gonna get those chewables. Man, I, I'm, I just feel like this is amazing. I just feel like this is amazing. Um, yeah. Am I going to put this on too? I literally sprayed three fragrances on myself. And I'm going to add this. And <laughs> I am a wreck. I'm, I'm going to be a walking cloud. And I love it. I'm getting on the train, so... Good luck if you seem to be, if you're on a train car with me. I appreciate you, but good luck. <laughs> you're going to be smelling me for sure. Oh, my goodness. I think I put on one, two, and three heavy hitters. It is what it is. I love it. I'm going to smell amazing. Guys, thank you so much for joining me on this uh, live stream. Please hit that like button. Please comment in the comment section when this video finally processes and uploads. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I know oud, oud, and leather. Whew. I'm going to be just insanely loud, uh, but I love it. Thank you so much. I missed you all, too. Um, I'm not going to be missing. I'm not going to be MIA so much in the future. Um, I should ask George for some samples, but I don't like doing that, you know. I don't want to feel like I have to say nice things when people be nice, you know. Um, I normally don't accept fragrances and, you know... Um, I normally don't accept fragrances or like I normally don't also accept um, sponsorships. Like I'm not really into that, you know. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> uh, guys, I want to thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining this live stream. This is the third episode of Live from Bergdorf Goodman. I wanted to share with you some really awesome uh, hidden gems. I'm going to constantly come back. I have a few more hidden gems to share with you. And there's always going to be a hidden gem I want to offer to you because there's so many that people don't notice or people don't consider. And um, I want you to consider them. It's not going to help my channel grow, but it's going to help you guys. And that's always all that I care about. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much again. You guys are the best. Good night. Love you all. Thank you so much for being here. And um, hope you have a great one. Uh, I get it, but sure he would not do that to George, really down to earth guy. Oh yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't trash George's work, you know. I just won't talk about things I don't like, you know. That's just how I do that, you know. <laughs> thank you, my man. I feel the love. I appreciate you all. You know what I'm saying? Oh God, thank you so much, brothers. It's it's awesome to see you. Have a lovely one. I hope you all have an amazing Valentine's. I'm about. I'll see you next week. Uh, this time Wednesday next week. All right, guys, be safe. Take care. Peace.